Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Path of Nostalgia. This video we are looking at one of my personal favourites. Another personal favourite. There is a lot. There's a good uh, few portion of personal favourites of mine. Let's think. Five and seven, of course. Boss and Pat. Um, Brom, obviously. I think you, I would say Barnet the Dog is another one. Rupert, Rupert Bear. Um, I would say there's, I think there's about five, there's about some there's some good there's some good some there's some good personal favorites there, and one well, of the other ones we're gonna get we get to another personal favorite, and it's Rosie and Jim, oh yes. So Rosie and Jim is a puppet show that was broadcast in 1990, and it ran for about eight seasons until 2000 at the start of the, of the 21st century. Interesting. So it survived in the 90s. And it finished at the start of the new new century. Funny that is. Um, obviously, the interest about this it's it's a puppet show that is presented by um, John Cunliffe. For those who remember John Cunliffe, who made a creative post from Pat, he's Kendall born. Cool. Well, I'm from Kendall. He's from Kendall. We're all cool, yeah. Um, we're all, all containers are cool. I see some containers are cool. I mean. Even the band Bad Sea Power Station, was it? Was it Bad Sea? Was it Power Station or something? Was it Badly Power Station? That band, New Age band, that new indie band that Rough Trades got. They're from Kendall as well. So anyway, anyway, he was into the show. He created this, but it's also so Cunliffe created the show, and he presents it as well, which is interesting. I mean, if he's when you think about it, I think, how does that work? You mean, like, you have a story, you have a person who makes children's TV and writes books, and he presents a children's show that has puppets and he learns new things, learns about doing things and stuff. Okay. However, it, it, works, per it works perfectly, it works very nicely, it does. Right. So let's go into the main sort of thing, how did I get into Rose and Jim, and why it's my, one of my personal favourite shows of all time, from childhood. Um, like as always, my parents bought me VHS's galore. Back in the day, I mean, you have, yeah, like I mentioned before, like Possum and Pat, probably Possum and Pat, Fam and Sam, of, Fam and Sam, Brum, Barney, Rupert, and various other ones, other stuff, you know. And it's, and obviously Rosie and Jim was one of them. I used to remember, I can always remember the double packs I used to get. I mean, I got about, I would say, I know I've got three, but I think there's a fourth one I've got. I mean, the ones I can really think of were... Uh, Splash 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 from 1998, the sort of obscure uh, double pack featuring stuff from series 3 and 4, mainly 4, but there's, some, there's about 3 episodes from series 3, which was done by Pat Hutchins, that was released in 1998, that's about one of the time when I got that. Uh, Quack and Duck Boogie, which contained 3 episodes involving the Rolling Carved Duck, which was, presented by, which was presented by Neil Brewer, and though it is a double pack. The second tape is actually a Christmas special done by Pat Hutchins, was, which was released in... Oh, I think, 96? 96? That came out and it came in this dual pack with the new, there's some new episodes or something. And the other one was Classic Collection, Classic Collection Volume 1, which was in 2001, which contained the first nine episodes of the very first season. Oh yes. And... I'm trying to think of the, the other one I think I've got. Well, I can remember it, but I don't think I've got, I don't know if I've got it or not. It's just, it depends if I've got it or not. It's called Big Video Box from, it's orange it is. It's got a picture of Jim there, big, uh, making a cake full of sweets and top, with the top is full of sweets and stuff. Jeez. Um, I don't know if I got that or not, so I don't know. So, my recollection recollection of Rose and Jim was through VHS. The door packs I can remember fondly. And some of the other ones, like My Little Rose and Jim, the orange edition with the three episodes beginning the Letter S, Gingerbread Men and Other Stories, and there's the there's another one which is Falcons, and it's got the episode Horse Towing, which is released by Carlton, and um, Fish Face, I can remember, from 2000, 1999, 2000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously they appeared on numerous compilations, especially the 
uh, the war the video collection war was exclusive VHS releases so I can remember they were on every single they're on the all five of them they were were they yeah they were um yeah so anyway that is my sort of recollection of Rose and Jim on VHS I used to remember watching those they were really good so let's go to the crux of this show so obviously like I mentioned before it's created by John Collins and he presented it he he did the first two seasons and I would say in 90, 99, 91, 92, and that he did about 50 episodes he did. They all contained about 25 episodes, and when he left, they got a new presenter, which is Pat Hutchins. So the presenter, of course, is a narrowboat owner. Narrowboat owner, if you live in UK, for people who don't live, well, for, America, for people outside the UK, or maybe if people are from maybe from the US or something like that, you know, narrowboat owners are, it's like, you have like, something called a canal, you have like, there's something called a narrowboat, which is a longboat that people live on. Actually, you can use it, you can use it as a home. Hey, you can move around anyway you want and stay there, stay there, and something, or live there, or somewhere, or travel around British waterways or something, that's what it is. And for each, well, for the duration of the eight seasons, which lasted about for ten years, they had three narrowboat owners, of course. I mentioned John Cunliffe, and I mentioned Pat Hutchins, and there was Neil, and there was another one called Neil Brewer, who actually did was the longest serving. He did about four, four seasons. Pat Hutchins and John Cunliffe only did two. Interesting enough. Funny enough, I I've only remember watching stuff with Pat Hutchins. I think very much. I think I I can only remember her very much, and stuff with John Cunliffe. I I sort of remember as well vaguely through excerpt excepts and stuff like that and Neil Brewer I've never really seen much of episodes with him um not really I think I've only maybe seen an episode broadcast on CITV back in the late 2000 I think probably I'm not too sure really um there you go so these three narrowboat owners have like distinctive uh, sort of like personal uh, interesting char characteristics they do I mean John Conley Force is a writer he's a storyteller and they make stories of Rose and Jim of what they do if they found this thing, you know, like what John learned in this particular episode. And obviously, you know, Rian's story, like say maybe one Sunday Rose and Jim went on, was going down the kind of boat and encountered a lock or something. Or see someone painting a picture, very much. Um, that's how it goes. With Pat Hutchins, she was an artist, she was, she drawn, she used to draw on, um, pictures of Rose and Jim if they were, you know, carrying bananas and stuff or basically wearing hats or something, you know. She used to, she was very interesting with the, you know, very artistic she was. And then you got Neil Brewer, who was a, who was a musician. He's a, he's, so he used to sing a song with his either harmonica or accordion at the end. And fun fact... <laughs> QUIET DOGS! QUIET! One of the interesting things I know about Neil Brewer was he performed on a stage show, which is the, which is the only there's a stage show of Rose and Jim that Neil Brewer actually did. I don't know if there's actually footage of that, so I don't know. But he presented it. He sort of he was one of the only presenters. I think he was more involved it at the time in sort of when he came on board in the mid late in the late nineties, I think. And he basically kept it flow. He did well, entertained children. You know, he was very. I would say enjoyable, I would say. Um, he had an interesting style, he had a sort of like interesting style to him. And, you know, he was just involved, you know, like, like I said, he was long as, he did about four seasons he did, up until when he finished. And, yeah, quite good. Um, however, as, as time goes on, I think I find John Conley even more better, I would say. Mainly because of the stuff that they learn. Bit, which I mean, there's an interesting variety with these 50 episodes that John Colin actually presented. I mean, you learn about how glass is made, which is interesting. You know, glass is made from, well, it begins with sand, you get sand that you make into glass. That is something interesting. You learn about um, about flying an airplane, you know, you know, the experience of flying. You learn what dredging is. You learn how coracle is made. You learn how a narrowboat is made. You know, it's pretty interesting you know so i thought the john cliff was more interesting he had more very it was more varied it was than i say from hutchins and brewer very much um pat hutchins i would say 
had a very interesting variety. It was more colourful, it was. He had a bit more stuff, I mean, like, you know, how gingerbread are made. You learn, you don't learn what, you learn how to drive a steam engine and Neil Brewer's era, I think. It is. So I've gone down a bit. It had a more comedic edge to it, I think. I mean, I can remember one episode I watched. I remember researching, again, see what Neil Brewer's episodes were like. I remember watching something called Disappearing Trousers, in which he, he was, his trousers were getting shorter. And he had to go to a clothes store and get ones. And there's that comedic style. I think what well, I think it was I don't know. It sort of brings it more it tries to be more entertaining, I think. However, it was more subtle it, it's a bit more subtle what I think think of it when I was when I was what watching the jungle episode watching, I think. When they put um their clothes with John's clothes and like mixed up and like, hey, what hey, my sock what happened to my sock? It, sh it shrunk. Just into the size of my hand, or something like that. You know, I thought I thought that was entertaining. I think I thought it's really it's funny. It's light. It's so sort of like simple nineties funny hu uh, humor, presentable humor. Whereas with like I mentioned before, with the simple trousers, it, it tries to be up the funny. It is you know like bit, I would say pantomimic really. I would say it's gone for a bit more pantomime edge. And when I think of that era again. I think obviously with the, with the puppeteers and the voice actors of Rebecca Negan and Robin Stevens, I think Rebecca Negan's still good. I mean, her voice hasn't changed very much, though the design of Rosie sort of changed after which she's got more darker, a little bit more darker skin in the Newbury era than I say Colin and Hutchins. Whereas with Robin Stevens, his character of Jim's still the same. However, the voice has changed since the Newbury because he sounds more like he's more gravelly. I think with, in the in the Newbury era, he's more gravelly, sort of like he's getting old and like Jim's getting older. Like the sort, of, the sort of like simple squeak, and sort of like that sort of pitch of his voice is gone. Uh, in those ten years, you know, and, you know, like in the first four seasons, his voice is good. You know, it's sort of like it's tunable, I think. Or yeah, but however, he's more, he's more gravelly, a bit more. I don't know, maybe something like that, or a bit more older. I don't know really, but if I, I find it kind of strange, really. You know, it doesn't. It doesn't sound like a way like I used to watch us in gym. Like how I how I imagine his voice. It just felt a bit strange, and yeah, very much. I mean, to be when it well when I was in gym finished, I would say um, it's sort of they never really well. I'd say they never really done much since. I mean, they repeated an American. I think the Americans repeated it. In the early two thousands, and then they yeah, came back. Though I can remember one thing. I can remember is in January two thousand thirteen, they broadcast the first episode for the thirtieth the thirtieth anniversary of CITV. I watched it on BBC, ITV player. My God, that was a great experience. I mean, because ITV was saying with the thirtieth anniversary, they were, and they decided to broadcast the very first episode was June. What a brilliant move! Fantastic move! And they broadcast the other ones like Count Dukla and stuff, as well, which was good. My God, you know, see, they've. Right, they did a marathon. They did. I think at the time, I. No, I was, I was still in school, so I will. So I didn't really miss. I'm missing much, but I watched a few. I watched that one on, on catch up on demand. And I thought, yeah, it's really good. I mean, I never seen that episode. I have it on VHS. I have never seen that episode before, actually. So it's first viewing, and I thought, you know, broadcast the very first episode of the, of the very first season. Great move. So anyway. That's me talking about Rose and Jim, a personal favorite from childhood. I've always loved it. I always, I still love it. My era of my child, my child era of the shows I used to watch are better than children's these days. And I'm not going into detail about the Wild Brain reboot. No, I experienced it with Brum before. I'm not going to experience it now with Rose and Jim because I know what well, they've they've ruined it. Well, Wild Brain have ruined it now. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next video. Bye.